Hello everyone, my name is Shaggy Muffin for all who don't know. Today, we'll be going over 10 weapons that you forgot existed here in Old School RuneScape. So of course, again, with these types of videos, it's an opinion-based video. In addition, it's strictly a list of video. Number one doesn't mean that this is the number one item that people forgot about. In addition, if I forgot an item, well, that just supports this video even more, right? Going up for number one is the Karis, which is a dagger that players earn at the end of the contact quest. It's when you defeat the giant scarab in case those have forgot. The thing about this weapon is that it gives a 33% increase in damage against all calphites and scabarites. It also has a passive effect that punctures a hole in their exoskeleton which deals triple damage. Okay, so why is this item forgotten? Well for one, this item sucks. Its offensive stats are not that great as you can see on the screen. In addition, I know absolutely no one who would kill Scabarites besides Mr. No Sleep for his loot from 3000 video or whatever he may be doing. For Calphites, everyone either cannons them, ranges them, or is using entirely different equipment. I mean, I'm sure there's that one niche account out there that uses the Karis, but overall when people get to this point in the game, they have much better gear that they'd rather use. Could we see a buff where this item would be best in slot in a Slayer task? I doubt it. Back to the shadows with this weapon. For number two, it comes down to the rapier. And no, not the Grazi rapier. You know, the actually good version of the rapier. This one is called literally the rapier. So this item is earned by purchasing it from Smith on Mostly Harmless for a mere 25,600 coins after the completion of Cabin Fever. It has the same stats as a rune skim, which you can probably gather as to why just from the statement why it's not used. Basically, the rapier has the stab offensive stats and the rune skim has the slash offensive stats. In addition, the brime saber exists, so another reason as to why you don't get the rapier. So, why go through all the trouble of cabin fever, which has more stat requirements, as well as quest requirements needed, when you could easily do waterfall quest at level three, and basically get a rune skim for fire giants if you have the magic level, which is like what, level 20? I mean, there is no other way that you go about this, man. This is a no brainer. This weapon isn't a viable training method to seek with these requirements locked behind it, as well as we all know that the rune skim is much easier to obtain. It's a shame that your big brother is in the light, Mr. Rapier. True version of a rapier is known as the Grazi one. All right, ever been on RP world since seeing a dude rest as a monk throwing a mysterious explosive liquid on demons? Yeah, me neither. I forgot that holy water exists. This item is a literal ranged attack weapon where you chuck an entire vial at your target. Although it will only deal damage to demons, this item is actually made during Legends quest, but I'm sure you knew that already. So what's the point of making this item? Well, as I said before, it's specialized in fighting demons. In the quest, you do fight a demon and use holy water to execute it. This item isn't really used in practical use since there are so many steps to make it, as well as the trek to even get to the location or where holy water is, is quite a force. Overall, this item is not practical in the slightest, although it's interesting to see someone actually wield a vial. In addition, this item does make some good RP content, if you're into that. I'll stay away from that one though. As a friendly reminder guys, the easiest way to support small content creators is by subscribing, liking, and hitting that bell notification. Let's get back into the video. Coming at number 4 are Salamanders. These little guys are a two-handed weapon that breathes fire for you to train all three combat styles. They're only obtained by either the GE or by Hunter. Basically, you load these guys up with the respected ammo for each different type of Salamander. There's really only two places where you would see anyone use these weapons. At Barrows, because every Barrows brother is pretty much weak to magic, and finally, Lava Dragons to safe spot them. Honestly, don't know anyone that would use this weapon in general. Haven't seen anyone ever train with these, so... Yeah, long lost are the days of where you'd see people use these weapons, but there's that one guy in the comment section who's going to bring up something along the lines of, I've seen 17 people use this at Barrows in a 20 minute period. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. To that I say, lucky for you my man. Good job. Let's continue onwards. Coming at number 5 is another pirate related quest item. It's the barrel chest anchor that is gained from the completion of the Great Brain Robbery. This item is really seen in the PKing scene, but we all know that PKing scene is dead. 
as much as wilderness so don't think we'll be seeing this weapon anytime soon in addition there is really no use for this item outside of PKing. I've never seen this item ever used in PVM, nor have I ever seen anyone mention this item before as their primary weapon, as well as no one's ever mentioned this as their special attack weapon. So this is probably like one of the most quote unquote controversial items here on this list because I'm not part of the PKing scene, so I just don't see this. I don't go to areas where PKing is, you know, pretty hot. So yeah the next item is the mjolnir literally an item that i did not know existed until i was researching for this video i had to google on how to even pronounce this also apparently this is thor's hammer for all those marvel fans out there this item comes in three different varieties gothics ceridomen Samurak. These two-handed weapons are discovered by digging them up after the making history quest using the enchanted key. There exists only one of each type per account making this as useless as anything else. Why? Well even though it's named after gods, these don't count as god items in God Wars Dungeon. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Dude, I literally on the wiki, it says that these do not count as a Ceridoman item, but they do. What? I swear it said it did not count as an item and it, and what? I'm so confused. Okay, next up is the Staff of Balance, and holy shit, this thing looks sick. Alright, so the Staff of Balance is a Guthix-based Staff of the Dead. It's a Staff of the Dead with the ability to autocast the Claws of Guthix. Even though it's based on the God of Guthix, it still somehow acts as a Zamorakian item. Beats me, but okay. Alright though, so this item is actually sick because of how it acts as a Staff of the Dead, making you get that 50% reduction on melee based damage when you have the staff equipped. But overall, why is this item forgotten? Well, for one, no one really uses the Fist of Guthix spell. In addition, this is a pricey item. This is currently running at nearly 30 million GP. So why is it so expensive? Well, you get one of the components for this item from Last Man Standing, resulting in not many people seeking this reward, nor many people playing the game since we've all seen that Kemp Q video. Overall, sick item, very limited use, that's why you don't really see it, and right now it's a little bit too expensive for what it offers. Another pirate item related to this list, lads. Okay, never doing that again. Hmm, makes you think how pirate weaponry is absolutely useless in this game. They don't even have cannons under their beard. It's the dwarves. Anyways, next up on the list is the Lucky Cutlass. This item is obtained by purchasing it from Smith. Once again, hey Smith, good to see you around, buddy. On Mostly Harmless, after the completion of, you guessed it, the Cabin Fever Quest. This item requires a level 30 attack and doesn't have too high of stats. Once again, an item that's locked behind a quest that requires a variety of things. By the time you're able to even wield it, it's already obsolete. I mean, you have a cool sword for your costume party though. Gotta fit the theme somehow. For number 9, I have an item that I had no idea existed until I started researching for this topic. I think it's also because I've never done this piece of content before. So this one might come off as one of those another controversial piece. It's the Merfolk Trident that is bought from Marin's Market in the underwater area of Fossil Island for 400 mermaid tears. It's actually one of the few weapons that allows for the player to swim while wielding it. Its purpose is to aid with drift net fishing, which allows for an increased chance to scare off fish shoals into the net. It also can be charged with puffer fish to allow the player to regain breath underwater. This is actually a somewhat expensive item, quite surprisingly in my book. It's coming in at nearly 700k at the time of this recording. I mean, how often is this item used? Drift net fishers? Where are you at? The final item on this list is pertaining to any of the croziers that are obtained from either medium or hard clue scrolls. These things only serve one purpose and one only, to be able to boost your prayer bonus by a decent amount of plus six. These aren't valuable, aren't used too often, and really can only be seen nowadays for potentially agility training to preserve your boosted levels when you're eating a summer pie, as well as 
fashionscape. But the OGs remember their true purpose. Thank you to Noob Show for permanently reminding me for what their true intentions were all along. As always, guys, we have to thank our channel membership supporters, and in particular, this time around, we have Z Kinzel, as well as Ran Legend and Parth Patel. Thank you guys for supporting this channel. As well as, guys, my name is Shankamuffin. I'm signing out. Please enjoy this outro.